Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Big Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. I've uh, been really really busy today with channel and script writing and research. So what I'm going to do today, this is dedicated to all them Eddie Hearn fans. And people who just love me talking about Eddie Hearn. <laughs> Right, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to do a video now, and I think we're going to call it We're going to call it Brooke and White Who is to blame? For example, Kel Brook Now, world class fighter Where's his career going at the moment? Where's his, where's his career going at the moment, Kel Brooks? Hey, where, where's it going? What, what are they doing with Kel Brook? You know, they've got... Uh, they've got Frank Smith on boxing... Frank Smith on boxing scene. Boxing scene, boxing social. On boxing social. Talking about Kel Brook against... Amir Khan, after Amir gets this fight out at way in whatever, Dubai, Saudi Arabia or whatever Amir Khan's fighting, nobody's even interested in that fight but Amir's interested in it because he's picking up millions of dollars but, which he doesn't need Kel Brook's in limbo isn't he? Kel Brook's a victim of his own success but when you go back and you look at Kel Brook's career we all gave Frank Warren stick for not delivering for Kel Brook didn't we but has Kel Brook's team got to take a bit of responsibility for that they knocked back the Tim Bradley fight they never pushed for the Manny Pacquiao fight when he was WBO world champion Frank Warren obviously is well in with WBO Kel were mandatory why didn't they enforce that fight? What were all that about? Is that because Manny Pacquiao were pushing for the Mayweather fight and things behind the scene were saying, look, we don't want Kel Brook to upset the apple cart because maybe Kel could have beat Manny Pacquiao at that time or he could have done a Tim Bradley on him. We don't know, do we? Were Manny Pacquiao protected from Kel Brook? No, I don't think so. But I also think Frank Warren could have pushed for that fight with Manny Pacquiao. They knocked the Tim Bradley fight back. There were others they knocked back, Mike Jones. There were other fights that Kelbrook could have had when they were with Frank Warren. Old fish eyes. But he didn't, did he? And I think Kelbrook's team have to take responsibility of that. His stepdad, Terry Thompson, I've met him. I like him. He's all right. Shakes me hand every time he sees me. How are you doing, Porky? I'm all right. For all I know, he could walk off and say, what a fucking fat prick Porky is. So I don't know. That's just how boxing is, isn't it? I don't know him personally. Dennis knows him a bit better than me. When he was with Frank Warren, I know that he had his barrister mate get involved from Bank Street Chambers. I know them very well up there because... I had a barrister from up there. He's a judge now called Peter Kelson. Judge Peter Kelson, uh, I used a barrister from there and he did me proud at court but getting back onto the Kelbrook situation he's got the clean sweep hasn't he, he's gone through all the levels but there's fights that he should have had there's fights that he should have had and he didn't add him has he when Kelbrook got a world title the sky was the limit he had a world title in a glamour division what boxing industry insiders call a glamour di division and what I call it a glamour division are the old school weights, you know the seven weights, you know there were no super middle, no cruiser while they back in the day 
Super Midland Cruiserweight, they're not classed as the glamour divisions, are they? Lightweight, welterweight, middleweight, heavyweight, could throw in featherweight. Featherweight, lightweight, welterweight, middleweight, heavyweight, there's five there, but I think the old school division is seven or eight, isn't there? You know, old school. But then people got bigger and promoters wanted to control things more. Well, that's another story. If you want to start talking about that, I can scream that from rafters because there should be a division from light heavy, 175 pound, to cruiser. There's 200 pound jump there, isn't there? 25 pound. So, but there could be six or seven divisions in between that, couldn't there? I mean, how many divisions is there between? Uh, lightweight 135 pound and middleweight so you've got lightweight 135 light welter welter light middle middle so you've got three weight divisions between them 25 so we could squeeze three weight divisions between light heavy and cruiserweight couldn't we 25 pound difference because they did that for safety reasons so why can't we have safety reasons from light heavy to cruise away, £25. Anyway, that's another topic. That's something for the, for the promoters to decide. But getting back to Kell Brook, I think that Kell Brook's I think that uh, Kell Brook's uh, Missed it, missed the boat. And I think what happens when you miss the boat? <laughs> oh my god! Uh, people making videos about me. I'm not going to say his name on here because that's what he wants. In a YouTuber's making videos about me. I don't know. I'm not saying I've arrived on that, but you know, I get death threats daily of emails and. <laughs> You know, people put bot broken bottles under my tyres sometimes and then send me a text or they fly tip on my old car pitch. So, I'm still here. I'm still here, but it is what it is, isn't it? So, little tiny small YouTubers, people who hide behind the camera making videos about me. Get in there, you know you're doing good. Right, uh, getting back to Kelbrook. Well, Kelbrook should... Kelbrook should really fight somebody, shouldn't he really? He's, he's like based his whole career around waiting for Amir Khan. And Amir Khan will know that. I mean, I'm not going to speak about what me and Amir Khan and Peter Fury spoke about in in Bolton uh, last year. But Amir Khan will know that. He will know that with Kelbrook can't risk it. He can't risk a fight. But he can't come back and have a fight for... For, for below par money. Kelbrook can't headline a Sky Show unless it's a decent fight. But if he's headlining, he's going to want to have a, a good paycheck. And he's not a big ticket seller. So, and he, he can't get up for them fights. And he can't get up to go on on somebody's undercard. Because he's been in with Golovkin, hasn't he? And Errol Spence and... Frankie Gavin has had free paper, free paper views. All we hear off Eddie Hearn every June is Kel Brook's going to be fighting in the fall. <laughs> it's got to a stage now where I think what's he been with, mate? A nine year, nine year. He's been with Eddie Hearn nine year. Kel Brook getting on for nine year, isn't it? In eight or nine year, all we've heard about is I'm here, can I'm here, can I'm here, can I'm here, can's earning millions. I mean. Amir Khan, right, when I was in Amir Khan's company, he had, he has an entourage and they're all going to want pain, aren't they? Uh, Amir Khan don't need the money, does he? And I like Amir Khan, but I like Kel Brook as well, I like them both. I think Kel Brook, as I've said many a time, Kel Brook could have been our, uh, he could have been our, uh, what do they call it? Terry Norris or somebody like that, he could have, he could have, Kelbrook could have ruled at 147, 
if they'd have played ball. Well, they've not played ball, have they, with him? Who's to blame? Is it Eddie Hearn? Is it... Is it Eddie Hearn, or... Is it... Is it, what they call it? Is it Kel's dad? Is it Kel Brook? Somebody is to blame for Kel Brook. Now, he's now in limbo. Where, where does he go from here? Where does Kel Brook go from here now? Where? What if Amir Khan decides to do Ramadan after his next fight and then have a break with his family? That's going to take it to next summer. That's another year from now. What? I mean, we're already hearing reports that Kel Brook's walking around about 15 stone at the moment. This is what I'm hearing. I mean, he's walking around just over 200 pound. Now, everybody knows that he's a 190 and in between fights, so is it possible that he is 205 pound? Yeah, and that's getting on for 15 stone, isn't it? Talking about a kid here who's, who gets in ring at 11 and a half stone, so if he's put three stone on in weight, when normally he's putting on two stone, that to me is risking it a bit. I don't know, but he just he's in limbo, isn't he? A wasted talent. And I think if him and Eddie Hearn are going to go the separate ways, I think Kel Brook needs to start afresh somewhere else. He's got his trainer John Fuchs. They've got a win on board, so they know each other. He trusts John. John Fuchs is a pal of mine, he's not money motivated. Uh, it is what it is, isn't it? But, I don't know, I, I'm just gutted for Kel Brook as a person. And as a, I'm a boxing, first and foremost, I'm a boxing fan. I like to see good fights. Kel don't get any bullshit, he just tells it straight. He does all his media obligations, he gets his set in good shape. He always hits the weight that he has to hit in for fight in fight week. He's a consummate professional, but where Kel will be let down will be in here, mentally. He's been messed about, hasn't he? Eddie Hearn can't deliver. Eddie Hearn fanboys can say what they want to say. Eddie's not been able to deliver for Kel Brook at all, has he? What has he delivered for him, really? He's delivered for himself. Yeah, he's delivered, he got Kel two pay-per-views back to back. But he got his face smashed in, didn't he, as well, both times. From two biggest punches in divisions. Golovkin's biggest middleweight puncher out there. World champion. Errol Spencer's biggest punching welterweight. Statistics don't lie. Both Olympians, they both punch Kel's face in. Kel's took one fight where he wasn't big enough. He never even fought at that weight. Jumping two weights, not only just against a, a tune-up fight at the weight, he jumps in with Golovkin, so he's got balls on him out here. Balls. Big mandingo balls. The other one, Errol Spence, Southpaw. Oh, God. Southpaw. Massive, massive punching, big punching Olympian. Southpaw came to Sheffield and did that to Kelly in his own town. Made him quit. So, made him quit. The Golovkin fight put doubts in him mentally. Because they were already with, Ant, with Tal, weren't they? We all know what that fight was about. Everybody got paid in that fight, didn't they? Golovkin got paid. Eddie Hearn got paid. Sky got paid. Kelbrook got paid. Dominic Ingle got paid as well, didn't he? Now, you would have thought that Eddie Hearn would have... Agreed to that Spence fight down the line and let Kel have another fight in between to get his confidence back. Or maybe Kel should have put the fight off three months, delayed it, to let his feet face heal a bit better. But no, you've got to give him his jewels, he turned up for that fight. And I don't think we, we may have got to fit Kel Brook in great shape, which you always get. But maybe Kel Brook were maybe used in that fight. Maybe. Maybe you were used. Maybe Kel Brook weren't 100% in that fight. Now he's in limbo, isn't he? So who's to blame? Who's to blame for the Kel Brook situation at the moment? Who is to blame? 
I don't know. I don't know, but I'm not saying it's Eddie Hearn. I'm not saying it's Kel's dad. I'm not saying it's Kel, Dominic Ingle, the fans. I'm not saying it's anybody. I'm asking you, the fans, who do you think is to blame? Like and subscribe. Leave a comment at the end of the video. Alright? But I want your comments. I want to hear what you've got to say. No good people sending me them daft emails. You know. Telling me I should get a better pair of jeans or a better shirt or a newer settee or whatever. That's not boxing, is it? Leave your comments about boxing. Leave them in the box. If you want to leave your helmet of the month choices for June, you can leave them in box as well. But I prefer them on Twitter or email. But leave your comments regarding Kel Brook. That's what I want to hear about. I want to hear about Kel Brook. Who's to blame for the Kel Brook situation? I'm now going to do a different video about white now. Peace out, keep on trucking, keep supporting boxing, it's a fantastic sport. And keep them videos coming about me, you other YouTubers, can't be rivals sending me videos about me. <laughs> Could you imagine me doing a full video about Kogan Cassius, eh? Unbelievable.